Players across the country made their plans official Wednesday, signing national letters of intent. Texas A&M's class consisted of 27 players. On July 1st at the PGA Professional National Championship, in a pool of over 300 golfers, Midlander Stephen Young nabbed one of 20 spots to qualify for the PGA Championship. And although Young practically lives out here at Midland Country Club, he barely has time to practice. I'm a golf pro, but I work, and uh, it's a misconception that... Matthew Villanueva live at Grande Stadium now with more on tonight's game. Matthew, I can't help but notice you don't have a date. Marshall, you know the CBS Sports Department rule. You made it up yourself. No girlfriends during the football season, although the atmosphere kind of takes me back to my glory days. Uh, let's talk mid to the lead, though. On the initial schedule, Texas A&M and Brown were slated to be back on the diamond Sunday afternoon at Olsen Field to finish their three-game series. But before the final game could be played, business from Saturday had to be taken care of. You see, Mother Nature loves Aggie baseball so much, she decided game two of the series should take two days. Now I've had countless amount of time to think about this and without a doubt my choice of walk up song will be Nas's Made You Look. But you gotta keep the fans in it, right? Which is why my alternate song would be The Stones, Brown Sugar. Yet neither of those songs could compare it to an instrument that took over the A's organization last year. Yeah, I'm here at Security Bank Ballpark. It looked like we needed all the superheroes we can get, but it looks like the rain's gonna pass with me right now. I've got Cortland and Micah. Cortland, who are you? I am Spider-Man. Yeah, can you show me your web? Almost every week, our newsroom gets a press release from the Fayette County Sheriff's Office, and it's always about an impressive drug bust that they have. So we sent News 3's Matthew Vitaweva down south, where one deputy and his dog have together cleared more than $33 million in illegal cash and drugs. If you head to Fayette County, everybody knows about one crime-fighting duo including the Prousies, who have owned their meat market for four generations. Yeah, he's in the paper all the time. A big drug bust, uh, catching criminals. He needs to get a good steak. He needs to get paid for his job because he's a good dog. Lobos. <coughs> An eight-year-old Belgian Malinois canine has been working with his human counterpart, Sergeant Randy Thuman, for six years. Good boy. That's a good boy. It's basically an easy job for me because I don't have to tell them nothing, you know. I mean, they get out there and do what the job requires. The pair work together mostly to find illegal drugs. No matter where criminals might try to hide them. So I opened the hood up and he jumped into the engine compartment and was scratching on the battery. I just asked the people to follow me to the, to the local auto zone because I was going to need to drill a hole in their battery. Ended up being full of cocaine. Their accomplishments come from daily dedication. It's every day something, you know. He's with me more than my kids are with me. The danger they both face is the same. You have your license? And the respect Lobos has in the law enforcement community is equal to his human colleagues. I wouldn't ask uh, one of my fellow deputies to search a building with a guy with a gun. You know, I'm not going to set him up for failure here. Day. Yeah. And while every day the two may not haul the big catch. I think you're good, man. Fayette County's drug busting duo is all about the chase. Exactly like fishing. It's got to have patience and persistence. I'd rather do this though than go fishing. In Fayette County, Matthew Villanueva, News 3. The Franklin baseball team started its three game regional semifinal series with Nacogdoches Central Heights Thursday in Madisonville. The Lions playing for their first ever trip to the regional final round of the baseball playoffs. To get there, Franklin will have to beat a Central Heights team ranked number one in Class 3A. Blue Devils have a 1-0 lead in the sixth. Franklin threatening with two runners on, but Texas A&M commit Grayson Rodriguez gets the strikeout and gets out of the jam. Bottom of the inning, Central Heights extending the lead. Gabe McCarty's base hit to left sends Cole Renault home. The score a part of a three-run frame, giving the Blue Devils a 4-0 lead. That's more than enough cushion for Rodriguez, the future Aggie. Striking out 13, throwing a no-hitter in Central Heights 4-0 win. Game two of the series is Saturday afternoon at 3 back in Madisonville. And in Class 5A, Brenham gives up eight runs to Crosby in their regional semifinal series opener and gets run ruled in five, 14 to four. The series now switches to Fireman's Park. That's today starting at 630. And in case you missed it last night, LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers rewrote some records last night. The Cavs finished off the Boston Celtics 135-102 to win the Eastern Conference Series Finals and go to the NBA Finals. But to be commended, 
James passed Michael Jordan for all time on the playoff scoring list, as well as becoming the first player to lead two teams to four NBA Finals each, giving all more the room for the haters to hate just a little bit more. Game one of the NBA Finals between Cleveland and Golden State is Thursday, June 1st. They're the first teams to meet in three straight finals in NBA history.